Hello, Carson. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Great. I haven't um, done a virtual Zoom interview in actually quite some time. So I'm glad that we got this on the schedule. Yeah, it's been a couple months. i um, just been so busy, but I'm like, I want to make this sure. work. So it's great to awesome. see you. Glad we're doing it. Yes, yes. So as I just mentioned previously, um, before we started recording, I'd love to, of course, uh, touch on all your projects, but I also have some questions just about your life as an actor and a few things you've brought up in other interviews. But I wanted to kick this off with talking a little bit about East of Middle West, because I know it's an indie film. And correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of people that um, I know just in the industry, they kind of, I'm not going to say they have anything against indie films, but everyone wants like that big project that's, you know, go sure, to, yeah. gonna be in theaters or something like that. But I'd love if you can just touch on why indie films are also just as important, especially in the oh, film sure, festival yeah. circuit. Definitely. I mean, there's it, it, the whole landscape for indie films is very interesting because you get these projects and these, and these roles that don't fall under a lot of the archetypes I typically audition for. Mm -hmm. I mean, for East of Middle West specifically, I can speak to because I remember getting the audition for it and it was it was something like 12 pages long, 12 pages of sides. And I'm like, 12 pages of sides, wow, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a long one. And then I read through the script and the character and immediately I was like, oh, I want this role mm -hmm. so bad because the character is just so different than anything I've gotten to play before. He's got this, this interesting morality sense that kind of fluctuates throughout the film. And indie films have a, have a more of a license to explore themes that I don't think mainstream touches on as much. And for that specifically, I think that they're so important. Cause I mean, I might be biased, but I, I like to think art has a pretty strong pull on people's uh, values and beliefs. I think that they're often a reflection of society or try to sometimes. Yes. And so, and so, yeah, I, I love that indie films are able to explore ideas that aren't aren't normally talked about. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the reason they aren't normally talked about is because a network or a studio is shutting them down. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like, as you yeah. mentioned, indie films can push the envelope a bit more because they are indie films. Um, totally. And you have Luckiest Girl Alive coming up, which is so exciting. Um, <laughs> yes. I know it's an yeah. all-star cast, um, but I'd love to know specifically any fun moments with Mila Kunis or any of the other oh, yeah. cast members. Yeah, speaking of films that push the envelope, that one yeah. sure does. It's going to be, it is going to be a ride. I can't wait for that movie to come out. Um, fun stories from set. Man, the whole cast that I was with on set, we all got along so well, like almost too quickly. It was, it felt like, wait, what's going on here? Why are we, we've been on set for a couple hours. Why are we all laughing and giggling like 12 year olds already? Especially because the material's super heavy. Yeah. But um, a funny story specifically, uh, probably the first day we were filming, we were doing a scene where uh, it was, it was really, uh, they started off with a lot of, the heavier material right out of the gate when we were filming, which was kind of a blessing because we got to see how each other acts. We got to to really, uh, we just got thrown into the fire together and, and we're just told to figure it out with great direction from Mike Barker, obviously. And I remember there was a point during the day when we were all like covered in like water and sweats from like a crazy like scene that we were doing. And, and we were all like huddled in a corner with like blankets on and, and sweats all in like a little like huddle together, just laughing at how crazy this all was for the first day of filming. So that was like a great little, it was a fun little story, but also just a great bonding moment for the cast. We were all kind of thrown in it together. Yeah. I, I love hearing that. And yes, that is a film that definitely pushes the envelope. And correct me if I'm wrong, that's going to be on Netflix, right? Yeah, Netflix. Well, uh, that's next year, sure. a big, you know, a huge streaming service. So I'm glad that Netflix is kind of getting behind that um, idea yeah. as well. Um, so would you say you do you find it important that these types of um, films that are super thought provoking and whatnot do become more widely available on things like Netflix, Paramount Plus? Totally, yeah. Oh, 100%. I, I, um, I, I love how this film is touching on a lot of topics that I think Hollywood sometimes tiptoes around. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is the direction that we should be headed, talking about very heavy themes of sexual assault, of the trauma that comes with it, PTSD, all of those very important, heavy topics. And 
it does it in a way that it, it's told in a perspective that I don't think has been done before. Very similar to the book, honestly. Jessica Knoll's book on also by the same title, Lucky Girl Alive, was so unique in when I was reading it, at least. And it, I think the film manages to capture that same um, intense, uh, personalized telling of, of a very important and traumatic story. And it does it with this, this, uh, this swagger to it and charisma. And I mean, obviously Mila Kunis is incredible, but just the writing as well is, it's a really fun ride the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm very excited to see it. And that's coming from someone who was, you know, a huge fan of Disney and Nickelodeon and Butterflies and, totally, yeah. and all that. But I also, I am a fan of, um, I don't know if you've seen Sex Education on Netflix, which I think- Oh, I love Sex Education. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I could talk about that show all day, but I won't. But that show um, <laughs> introduced themes, obviously, of a sexual assault, mm -hmm. and it did it um, in a very delicate manner, which I think yeah, is um, everyone really appreciated. And mm -hmm. it was touched on in season three, um, kind of revisited, which I think is so important. So yeah, Netflix has honestly just been on a roll lately. Crushing it, yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been great. Um, and okay, as promised, I as I was saying, I was going through some of your other interviews and you said something and I'm like, you need to elaborate because I literally okay. have never thought of it like this. You said that creativity can be learned and the it factor can be learned. Mm -hmm. I was under the impression it cannot be learned at least okay. until I thought about it. And I'm like, well, maybe it can because I'm sure you hear in Hollywood too, even on shows like American Idol or the X Factor, they'll always say things like some people just have it. So I yeah. love for you to just expand on that like it's time for totally. you to blow my mind <laughs> okay wow well, I'll, I'll do my best oh, wait. um i i think it can be learned because i don't think that creativity is is some some secret recipe that hasn't been defined before mm. i mean if if for example i i one of my favorite books for that i recommend to anyone that wants to become an actor or uh in in any medium because it's a theater book but it's called audition and quite literally in the book, there's 12 guideposts that the author suggests for anyone prepping scenes. And if you really want to, you can break down rules. You can break down, as weird as it sounds, creativity to different things that have to be hit on. I mean, it's, it's the same way that, uh, that a lot of studios, when they're looking at films, there's, there's kind of like a, a cheat sheet of what needs to be hit to meet the criteria to make this film work. Uh, from a business perspective, I, and I think the same, I think the same can be applied for uh, creativity. Uh, as as far as the it factor goes, don't get me wrong. There are so many things in acting that are just of out of your control. Uh, at least half of it is probably out of your control, arguably more. And a, a hefty amount of luck goes into the industry as well. But I do think that um, the the quote unquote it factor is is something that people pick up over time. I don't think anyone's born with it. And if you aren't born with it, then I think you, it can be learned. I think it boils down to that for me. Yeah, no, that's, that's super fascinating. It reminds me of something that a college professor of mine said because um, part of the rubric or like part of our grade would be based on creativity. And I said yeah. to him, I'm not creative at all. So I'm gonna fail this project. I'm sure I said it more professionally, but something like that. And he's like, yeah. There's a difference between being creative and artistic. I need you to learn the difference and tell me it in next class. And I'm like, okay, that's a good point. So often we think of them as mm -hmm. one and the same, but I mean, just our brains and our thought processes are creative in and of themselves. So yeah, thank yeah. you for elaborating on that because at least for me, um, I feel like sometimes people hold back from pursuing acting, singing, whatever it may be, just because they don't think they have that it factor, or they don't think they're oh, creative, or they don't think they can bring something new to the industry. So thank you for kind of defying that whole concept. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so important. And yeah, um, I wanted, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say there was a, I, I, I think it was an, an author I, I really enjoy. His name's Brandon Sanderson. He talks about how even with ideas, creative ideas, a lot of people are chasing like original thoughts and we've been around so long that I don't know if there's any more or he doesn't know if there's any more wholly original ideas to be thought mm -hmm. anymore. And so much of creativity now is just the combining of more than one idea and creating something new from that combination. And it's like, I think it kind of falls into the same vein of, 
of creativity, artistry. It's, it's all it's all something that can be, the more it's talked about, the more it makes sense. At least I found. For sure. Or sometimes the more it's talked about, the more my brain is like getting confused, but that's, to be that's, expected. It. that's <laughs> the type of thing. Like the more you learn about a topic, you the more confused you get instead of understanding it. But Definitely, it's just because yeah. there's so much to learn. Um, mm-hmm. And of course, Lock and Key, that's where uh, most people first heard of you. I'm not going to lie. I haven't watched it because it looks terrifying. But um, <laughs> my roommates love it. My ex-roommates, I should oh, that's say. That's awesome. Um, and I was talking to them about it before this interview. And um, they said, yeah, it's one of those um, shows that really makes you think. And then I started seeing a pattern. Um, East of Middle West makes you think, as does um, <laughs> Luckiest Girl Alive. So it seems like you're mainly taking on projects that really have a deeper theme. Is that something intentional? Um, you're only auditioning for those, or is that just kind of how it's happening? Uh, that, that's a good question. I, I've never put much thought into that specifically, but I can say that when I'm looking at roles, I, I try and always make sure that I bring some form of, of uh, deeper, th- like the themes of the project with me to the character, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Uh, maybe that attracts those types of projects more. I don't know, but I, yeah, I, I've, I think a lot of it has to do with just being very fortunate to work with incredible teams. I mean, Lock and Key, Netflix again, they're, that show was just so on top of everything, especially because it was one of the first productions I worked on. I think it was the first production I worked on during uh, like COVID mandates as well. Mm-hmm. So with the masks on set, the uh, quarantine schedules, the uh, distancing, everything was like so proper and so well done that, um, yeah, I, I think I've really lucked out in terms of the projects I managed to work on. For sure. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's so exciting. And maybe I'll brave it one day. Is it are there any like jump scares or is it more just the overall content is dark? I don't think it's, um, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's full on horror scary. Uh, okay. There's some crazy things that go on, but um, yeah, I don't think it's, uh, oh man, I'm trying to think of something I can compare it to, but I don't know if there's a show I can compare it to, which is probably why I love it so much. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it, I don't think it's, it's jump scares as much as it is scary circumstances, if that makes sense. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, like I can do like um, Ready or Not, I loved that movie, but I can't do okay, yeah. Paranormal Activity. And gotcha. like, I can't do Haunted Houses. So as I know, yeah. if there's nothing that's going to like jump out on screen, then I think mm-hmm. I could handle it. Because uh, again, I've heard so many great things about it um, from so many people. I just haven't sure, given yeah. a chance yet. Maybe I'll read the books first and then um, oh yeah I like a warm-up nice yeah I mean I know it's a bit different obviously but um and you mentioned that this was the first project you worked on um uh during the pandemic I'm wondering like just as an actor how are you staying safe how has it changed are sets starting to open up what's going on because um I'm mm-hmm. based in, L- in LA and it's still pretty strict yeah. as it should be because LA's you know we were huge totally city. yeah for sure yeah it was uh at first, very different. I, I wasn't sure what to expect, especially because, I mean, as actors, we show up on set and they, they cover us in makeup and then they're like, okay, now put a mask on over top. And it's like, mm-hmm. some parts of it felt a little little counterintuitive. And the other weird part was I never saw my castmates' full faces until we started doing scenes together, right. which I wasn't expecting. But um, they also had like these shield that we would use for when oh, like we had yeah. a lot of gore and stuff on our faces, like if they ever used blood or a lot of makeup and they didn't want to smudge it too much, then we had shields that protected us as well. But uh, in terms of personally keeping safe, when I found out I booked the role, I I kind of just told all of my uh, friends and family, I'm like, guys, I need to just take it easy. I'm not seeing anybody anyways. So I'm just going to like remove myself from any social settings because I'm working. And if I'm working, I don't want to, I don't want to jeopardize a production by by doing anything I I don't know seeing anybody or yeah yeah of course well and thank you for being responsible too um because at the end of the day we all have kind of the audience members obviously a lot of shows have been put on hold so it's been even more special totally, yeah they've been able to be released but correct me if I'm wrong lock and key the release dates weren't pushed back were they I don't think they were pushed back. What they did end up doing, and I don't know if this was because of COVID, but seasons two and three were filmed back to back, which was interesting. Uh, it was all filmed in one go. So uh, season three wow. has already been filmed and uh, ready to go for next year. I think 
Yeah, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty no, sure. No, I think I was reading and yeah. it said, um, I mean, it said it on Wikipedia, so who knows? No, I'm kidding, yeah, but yeah. it said it'll be out <laughs> next year. Um, mm -hmm. Was it hard to film two seasons back to back? Like, were they merging, not merging episodes, but were they filming like scenes from season three and then you had to go back to season two? I don't know if I ever had to jump around too much for, for that. I think it was fairly linear for me. There was okay. one, there was one time when I was working with the same scene with two different directors because the episode one for season two director and the episode eight were different and they, they had different styles and different shots that they wanted to use. So that was an interesting crossover. But uh, other than that, I think, I think it was pretty linear. I think it had to be pretty linear just in terms of like how they'd scheduled the entire shoot with the blocks and stuff. They, uh, mm -hmm. they went all the way through season two. And then I'm pretty sure after that, they went all the way through season three as well. Wow. Oh, yeah. it's so exciting. It's so, yeah, exciting. Cool. so is that filmed in uh, Vancouver? Uh, I was in Toronto when I was filming. Toronto. I know that season one, and I think a little bit of season two was filmed in, uh, I think it was Nova Scotia, somewhere in the mm -hmm. Maritimes for sure. And uh, I, I was all excited because I wanted to go to the Maritimes for a little bit to film. Uh, but because of COVID, it wasn't possible. Okay. So um, I filmed all of my stuff in Toronto and GTA area kind of around Toronto. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm based in LA, but I know, of course, like the entertainment scene is huge in sure, Vancouver. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I first yeah. found out that Vancouver was like a hot spot because that's where Twilight was filmed. But I've since oh, come yeah. to learn that well, that's not a rarity. <laughs> nice. like Riverdale's filmed there. So mm -hmm. um, so do you ever come out to LA for any projects or would you say that Canada's kind I, of the home base? Yeah, I, I've kind of been um, flopping around back and forth quite a bit. Uh, again, pre-COVID, I, I used to spend uh, three or four months a year out in LA. Oh. I was there recently in uh, August and then again for a couple of weeks in, in September for a Newport Film Festival, which was a lot of fun. I, I love LA. It's, it's a great spot. It, I've it been is. there. Uh, yeah, I, I've been there quite a bit and it's just, I mean, the city, it's just gorgeous year round perfect situation. I'd love to kind of split my time between Toronto and LA and then just like dodge winter all the time uh, yeah I could LA for the winter months and then come back here in the summer it would be perfect <laughs> of course if it makes you feel any better it did rain yesterday um but oh, okay. we, it wasn't that cold I had one like thin jacket on it thin jacket on so but no I, to I totally get it we were very spoiled here in LA mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a fun place it's a fun place so oh, do you sure. have any plans for the holidays holiday plans I'm I'm just I, so I was in uh, I was in Newfoundland for a month before this, and I'm finally back in in uh, Toronto after having traveled around a whole bunch for a while. So I'm excited to just kind of relax with my family and friends that I haven't seen in forever. Yeah, just a lot of uh, downtime. I'm trying to take it easy for the next little bit, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, and which is I'm sure so needed. You've been working back mm -hmm. to back and hustling, and sometimes I think actors need a break too. I mean, I know they need a break. Too. Yeah. Oh, I would never complain about getting work, believe me. But uh, oh, when I no. get the time off, I love to make the most of it, which has of been course, awesome. Of course. Yeah. So are you working on anything preliminary or not preliminary? I don't know the word. Um, it's Friday. I know what you mean. Do you have anything in the works besides yes. what we discussed? Well, yeah, for sure. I, um, I have something coming out in 2023, which I cannot talk about yet. But I also have a, um, I, I just finished working on a TV show called Astrid and Lily Save the World, which I believe is coming out sometime in January, which is very oh, cool. Soon? Yeah, yeah. It's a really fun show. It's on sci-fi and the whole team behind it is just so much fun to work with. That's what I was filming in Newfoundland for the last little bit. Oh, so it's a quick turnaround if they're very in turnaround. January. Wow. I've never seen a turnaround this quick before. They've already, yeah. my, my character comes in in the later episodes. And so I, I think they already have episodes one through five finished and ready to go. So by the time I showed up, I was like, wow, okay. It's fastest that's, tournament I've ever seen, but it's awesome. Yeah, I've <laughs> never heard of that, but that's exciting. Mm -hmm. I don't have to wait as long yeah, for one of your projects to come out. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And my, my dad is a huge fan of sci-fi. So is it like oh, a sci-fi awesome. theme or it just happens to be on that channel? Totally. 
Oh, oh yeah, there's God. like monsters and aliens and all that oh crazy gosh. stuff running around in a high school setting. It's very fun. Very oh, fun. he is going to watch every episode. I will too, but <laughs> I'm not that. at home full time because I'm in LA and San yeah. Diego. But when I visit him, when we're looking for a new show, that will be the one I suggest. <laughs> awesome. Oh, uh, well, awesome. Carson, it was so lovely to talk to you. And thanks for letting me kind of go off on a million tangents. Um, I oh, always likewise. Like to... A lot of fun. Oh, yeah. I always like to obviously keep my interviews um, talking about projects and all of that, but also mm -hmm. kind of get into your brain a little bit. And I, I think you're Fantastic. very mature and you have a lot of insight into the industry for your age. So I'm Thank sure you. everyone okay. watching will have, um, you know, will take away a lot from it. So do you want to um, just plug all your social media, Instagram, Facebook, oh, sure. um, Twitter, all that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, by all that, it's just Instagram. Uh, Instagram oh, okay. is Carson <laughs> underscore McCormick. It's my uh, only active social media. I, I keep it simple. All my stuff is on there for projects and I post some fun stuff there too occasionally. So yeah. Perfect. Yeah, you've got some great behind the scenes stuff. And then of course, we'll check IMDb for anything coming up. I, oh, I'm yeah. always creeping on people's IMDbs. I spend way <laughs> too much time on that website. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's funny. It's kind of like you go down a rabbit hole. Like I'm looking up someone and I'm totally seeing what yeah. movie they have coming up and I'm like, oh, who else is in this movie? So yeah, it's like a fun little- Oh, I've been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun time. <laughs> well, Carson, thank you again so much. Um, what a great way to kind of wrap up my week uh, with this interview. And next time in, you're in LA, I'm sure I'll see you either at an event or totally, yeah. some follow-up interview in person. Yeah, um, for sure. That'd be yeah. great. Oh, I'd love to. Oh, yay. Well, thank you again and congratulations on everything. I'm excited for everything to come out. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was a great interview. This was a lot of fun. Oh, thank you. I agree. <laughs> All right. Take care. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good one.